Maxwell House Coffee presents Good News of 1940. Makers of Maxwell House Coffee welcome you to another hour of entertainment brought to you each week from Hollywood. And starring Fanny Bryce, Hanley Stafford, Connie Boswell, and Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, plus tonight's guests of honor, the glamorous Marlene Dietrich and the unglamorous Maxie Rosenblum. And here is your host for this hour of entertainment, Edward Arnold. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. We dedicate our program tonight to our guest of honor, a gifted actress and a charming and beautiful lady, Miss Marlene Dietrich. Meredith starts us off with a new song called, uh, uh, what's your opening number tonight, Meredith? New song, Eddie, and uh, I got a brand new way to present it. All right, come on, what is it? Well, instead of telling you the title just right out, I give it to you in the form of a riddle. Well, there's certainly a fertile brain under all that coconut matting. All right, Meredith, let's have the riddle. Okay. It's not large, it's not blue, and it's not an elephant. What's the title of the song? It's not... Uh... <laughs> oh, I got that. That's easy. Meredith Wilson plays a new song called The Small Green Wallaby. You're wrong, Eddie. It's The Little Red Fox. Oh, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. All right, The Little Red Fox, and listen for Warren Hall. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a little red fox. And one fine morning, he heard the sound of the hunter's horn. The barking dogs were close behind. So he jumped the fence, ran through a meadow, through the potato patch, and through a field of corn. Oh, it was a merry chase. But the little fox didn't mind, and he told him so in the following descriptive manner. Yeah, 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 said the little fox. Yeah, yeah, you can't catch me. Yeah, 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 said the little fox, singing merrily. The little fox ran through the woods, chased by a barking dog. By leaps and bounds, he lost the hounds, and he ran in the hollow log. Yen, 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 said the little fox. Yen, yen, you can't catch me. Yen, 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 said the little fox, singing merrily. The hunters chased him across the creek. He reached the other side. He put his toes up to his nose and swelled up his chest with pride. Yen, 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 said the little fox. Yen, yen, you can't catch me. Yen, 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 said the little fox, singing merrily. The hunters chased him across the creek. He reached the other side. He put his toes up to his nose and he swelled his chest with pride. Oh, yeah, 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 said the little fox. Yeah, yeah, you can't catch me. Yeah, 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 said the little fox. Go bark up the tree. You can't catch me today. Yeah. I'm on my Gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to present the glamorous star of Universal's thrilling new drama of the West. Death Street Rides Again, Miss Marlene Dietrich. Thank you very much. Well, Marlene, before we get started, there's one very important question I'm sure all of your admirers would like to hear you answer. Lately, you've generally played in more sophisticated types of stories, haven't you? Yes. And your fans have always thought of you as a glamorous, unapproachable, beautiful lady who wore only the most expensive and elaborate gowns. Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, how did it feel to play in that cowboy picture wearing old clothes and have somebody pour a bucket of water on your head? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I did enjoy making the picture immensely. Oh, well, that's fine. I hear it's great that you're wonderful in it and that Jimmy Stewart is excellent, too. Marlene... 
Uh, don't, uh, don't you think it's odd that we've never been cast together in a romantic picture? You know, I'm not altogether unfamiliar with the art of making love. Who is? <laughs> I see I'm rapidly getting nowhere. Uh, tell me, Marlene, uh, wouldn't it, uh, I mean, what is your conception of the ideal romantic leading man? Oh, let me see. I think someone, say, about your height. Yes. About your age. Oh. Your complexion and general disposition. Oh, Marlene. A man who is dignified like you, polished, and about 30 pounds lighter. <laughs> Marlene, you've hit me in a vulnerable spot. Hmm, Eddie, it's a pretty big target. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you want a man of about six feet, handsome, mm -hmm. dignified, polished, and 30 pounds lighter, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, I have to make the weight, Now, wait a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Step aside, Tubby. Oh, come here. Well, wait a minute. What's the matter? <clears throat> What's the, the matter? Well, this lady I'm talking to is one of the most important stars in the motion picture industry. And she doesn't want to have anything to do with you. So I'd suggest that you'd get out of here. Step it? aside, Tubby. Who's that good-looking kid? Now you're cooking with gas, honey. <laughs> Give us a knockdown, will you, Eddie? Uh, Miss Dietrich, it is with deep regret that I present to you this insufferable bore, Maxie Rosenblum. What a build-up. <laughs> Miss Dietrich, the feeling is mutual. My dear Mr. Rosenblum. Oh, I'm scorned already, Heidi. I've seen you in pictures. I've read about you. I've heard about you. But the real you exceeds my wildest dreams. How do you like that, Eddie? She even dreams about me. Well, okay, Marlene. When do we start making the picture? Yeah, stop it, Maxie. Marlene, would you like this piece of human flotsam and jetsam removed? Certainly not. Flotsam and jetsam? Stop with that double talk. <laughs> My dear, you wouldn't consider working with this, this ogre in a picture, would why you? Why not? Yeah, why not? I have absurd. You've got to have someone like myself with a broad continental background. You got it, all right. Looks like the map of Turkey. <laughs> Mr. Rosenblum, you're marvelous. <laughs> Do me a favor, will you? Cut out that Mr. Rosenblum stuff. You don't have to be so off stage. Off stage? Don't you mean upstage? Upstage, downstage. As long as you're friendly, call me Maxie. And I'll just call you Molly. Now you're cooking with gas. <laughs> oh, that I should live to see this day. Listen, baby, why don't you come down to the club tonight? You know I got a joint. Slapsy Maxie's. Slapsy Maxie's, what a charming name. Is it exclusive? Why, it's, uh, melodious with class. Maxie, Maxie. <laughs> Wait till we get to the club tonight, Molly. Shall I pick you up? I'm afraid I won't be able to go this evening. My dear Marlene, I persist. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm having some people in for dinner this evening. Bring them, bring them all. My guest. Now, is that bad? Sandwiches for free. Well, I guess I can arrange it. There'll be around 35 people. How's that? Why don't you say something? I think I said too much already. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You could bring them up. Is it a date for tonight? It's a date. I must get my shotgun clean, that's all. Bring all, bring all your wacky friends along. But be sure you're there by nine. Oh, my wacky friends will love it. Okay, fellas, bring the stuff in. Hey, wait a minute. Watch this. What's going on here? Photographers? Don't pose for these fellas, Marlene. Oh, lay off, Eddie. I gotta have a picture of Marlene and I. What for, Maxie? I'll hang it in front of the joint tonight. Now playing. Maxie Rosenblum and Marlene Dietrich. Oh, she can't do that. All right, then. I'll give her top billing. How do you want to pose, baby? Kissing me? Oh, no. <laughs> no kissing. Oh, come on. Let me kiss you once. Oh, it's only for a picture. Why not just pretend you're kissing her? Yes, um, let's just pretend. Hmm? Not me, Molly. Rosenblum never pulled a punch in his life. <laughs> well, there's another artist with us this evening who never pulled a punch either. Miss Connie Boswell. Thanks, brother. I'm glad you're in my corner. <laughs> All right, Connie. Ladies and gentlemen, Connie sings her own arrangement of one of the great ballads of the 20s, Stormy Weather. Since my man and I 
just can't pull my horse out together Keeps raining all the time The time Keeps raining all the time When he went away The blues walked in and met me If he stays away, old rocking chair will get me. All I do is pray, the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more and go on. Everything I had is gone, stormy. Since my man and I ain't together Keeps raining all the time When he went away The blues walked in and met me If he stays away Old rocking chair gonna get me All I do is pray the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more. I can't go on cause everything I had is gone some weather since my man and I Ain't together Keeps raining all The time The time Keeps raining all Warren. Yes, Eddie. Uh, Warren, in the few weeks I've been on this program, letters have come in from friends in all parts of the country. And no matter where they live, north, south, east, or west, it seems they all know and enjoy Maxwell House coffee. Well, I'm not surprised, Eddie, because today Maxwell House is sold in more stores than any other coffee in America. You see, friends, ever since that time, more than 50 years ago, when Joel Cheek created this famous blend, Maxwell House has made and held millions of friends. And the reason Maxwell House continues to make more friends every day is just this. We found a way to blend Maxwell House to a new perfection of flavor, a full-bodied, mellow flavor that comes from a very special kind of coffee, highland-grown coffees from remote and fertile plantations of Central and South America. And then, to bring out the true natural goodness of this matchless new blend, we've developed the uniform radiant roast process, which roasts each coffee bean evenly all the way through. No chance this way of weak coffee from under-roasting or bitter coffee from parched coffee beans. Yes, 50 years of experience have packed a lot of extra pleasure and satisfaction into Maxwell House coffee. And that's why today, more people are enjoying Maxwell House than ever before in its history. And that's why, wherever you shop, you will never need go out of your way to find that familiar blue can. If you haven't tried Maxwell House lately, ask for a pound tomorrow, will you? Compare it with what you now think is good coffee. We think you'll find new coffee enjoyment in this rich, deeply satisfying coffee that's now, more than ever, good to the last drop. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks. Well, today is a big day in the life of Daddy, played by Hanley Staffen. His rich old uncle is coming from Chicago to visit him, and Daddy has hopes of being remembered in his will. Uh, preparations have been made, and as the scene opens, we find Snooks and Daddy waiting at the depot for his uncle's arrival. Now, listen. Is this the station, Daddy? Yes, this is the station. Where's your uncle? He hasn't arrived yet. Why? Because his train is late. How do you know? 
I just asked the Red Cap. Who's he? Those porters over there are called Red Caps. Why? Because they are. My Uncle Strain will be delayed for half an hour because they had a washout on the line. Did they stop to let him do it? Let him do what? Hang his wash on on the line. Nobody hung any wash on the line. The line was washed out. How? They had a very heavy rainstorm, and part of the roadbed was swept away. Who swept it? The rain. With a broom? Did you ever see a rainstorm carrying a broom? No. Then why did you ask such a stupid question? I don't know. Well, don't ask any more. Why? Oh, stop it. And stop sprawling over that bench. Sit up straight. Now throw that gum out of your mouth and put your feet in. Put my feet in my mouth? No. Put them in so you don't trip people walking by. Take that gum out of your mouth and give it to me. You want to chew it, Daddy? No, I don't want to chew it. I just want you to be very ladylike when you meet my uncle. Is he my uncle, too? No. And he's really my step-uncle. He's my father's half-brother and my mother's cousin. So that makes him my uncle and your great-uncle. How did he get so mixed up? He's not mixed up. Oh, and listen, Snooks. It's very important that you make a really good impression on him. Why? Well, because, uh, because he's a nice old gentleman. And he'll think a lot more of Mother and me if he sees our children have been raised properly. <clears throat> when he passes on, I expect him to uh, sort of remember us. <laughs> Understand? Understand. What do I mean? He's got a pot full of tin. Exactly. No! No? Snooks, where did you get that expression? I hate to tell Mommy. Well, you better not snoop around so much. Kid's got ears like a submarine detector. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. Just be nice when my uncle arrives, that's all. Ain't the train here yet, Daddy? No, I don't think so. When it comes, they'll announce it. Ask the Redskin. Redskin. Red cap. Well, ask him where your uncle is. Oh, he doesn't know. Huh? Oh, and listen, Snooks. Uh -huh. Whatever you do, don't tell him what I named the baby. You mean little Oaks, Pierre? Yes. <laughs> you know that, uh... That name was Mother's Choice, not mine. I like it. Well, my uncle is liable to think it's a little crazy. After all, Robespierre is rather an odd name. What's your uncle's name, Daddy? Camembert Higgins. <laughs> Camembert? That's right. And he'll think Robespierre is a crazy name? Well, I hope I can soften the blow by breaking it gently. See? <laughs> See? What's your name, Daddy? Oh, Snooks, you know my name as well as you know your own. No, I don't. You do, too. What does Mother call me? Lunkhead. She does not. And don't remind me of it. You know perfectly well my name is Lancelot. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? I don't know. I don't want to go home. Oh, wait a minute. I think the train's coming in now. Yes, that's it. Come on, Snooks. The train's here. Let's hurry. Where's your uncle, Daddy? Car 204. Ah, yes. Here it is. Now watch for him, Snooks. I'll watch him. Oh, there he is. Mm -hmm. Run up and greet him. Say hello to him, sir. All right. Hello, mister. Are you my daddy's uncle? Well, I ain't nobody's uncle. I was the Pullman partner. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> girl, are you looking for Camembert, Higgins? Uh-huh. That's me. He's <laughs> 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 my stag, me. He looks like a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, uncle. I'm your nephew, Lancelot. Remember me? Yeah. Changed a good deal in 30 years, ain't you? I want to go home. Shh. Oh, uh, uh, this is my daughter. Snooks, suppose you give Unky a great big kiss. How's that? No good. Uh, yeah, guess she's shy. Snooksy, if you kiss me, I'll give you a penny. It ain't enough. Snooks. I get more than that for taking cash to Royal. Oh. Tell me, Lancelot, did you at least marry well? Did I? Why, Uncle, I married the most wonderful woman in the world, and we adore each other. Yeah. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> are you raising your children in the proper spirit? Why, my children are the best-behaved kids in the world. <laughs> oh, Daddy. <laughs> uh, uh, come on, Uncle, I'll get your luggage and we go home. I fixed up the guest room, and it's just beautiful. You'll really love your stay with us. Where's your wife, Mr. Uncle? I uh, don't like to discuss that subject, child. Why? Well, since you're so nosy, we don't live together. We found we couldn't agree, so we decided to separate. 
Oh. Does that satisfy you? No. Why didn't you fight it out like Mom and your daddy? What's that, Snokes? Oh, uh, oh, oh, pay no attention to her, Uncle. She's a great little clown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you... I don't think I'll impose on your hospitality. I'll just... Oh, but I insist, Uncle. You'll be very comfortable with us. Sure. I want you to come to the house, Uncle Cumberbell. You do? Mm-hmm. I got a football for you. If you football? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with the football? Well, Daddy says we'll be rich when you cut off. Don't stand oh. going back to Chicago. Oh, wait. Uncle. Snooks, look what you've done. <laughs> oh, what are you yelling for? I didn't touch you. No, but you will. You're darn right I will. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, Meredith Wilson's next number is so good, I'm not going to let him mix it up with any riddles. He's going to play South of the Border, and I think his arrangement is even better than the other Spanish arrangement he's been playing for the last few weeks. All right, Meredith, let's have it South of the Border. <laughs> Warren, it seems to me there's a very lovely fragrance in the air. Yeah, I noticed it too, Eddie. It's uh, Miss Dietrich's gardenias. <laughs> no, Meredith, that's not the fragrance Eddie is talking about. It's the fragrance of freshly brewed Maxwell House coffee. And here's a steaming cup for you, Marlene. And now, while our friends all over the country are pulling up their chairs to join us in this grand Thursday evening custom of ours, I'll start serving. Here's your cup of Maxwell House. Yours, Connie. Yours, Eddie. Cream. Sugar. Well, I guess everybody's been served, so that's your cue for some music, Meredith. In 
just a moment, we return to more good news, including a comedy sketch with Miss Dietrich and the entire cast. In the meantime, we pause briefly for station identification. This is Edward Arnold again, and we continue our good news show with one of the most entertaining dramatic sketches I've ever heard for radio. And it'll be played for you by Miss Marlene Dietrich and Mr. John Lake. Our story is called The First Act, adapted by Robert Riley Crutcher. In it, Miss Dietrich plays Ghislaine Hartford, a popular and famous motion picture star. The scene is her apartment. She's alone. The telephone rings. Hello? Who? Oh, Jerry. Hello, darling. Where? Oh, I couldn't tonight. No, I couldn't. I really couldn't. If you must know, I'm expecting someone. Oh, Jerry. Every man I meet doesn't make love to me. After all, I'm not that beautiful. He's an artist named Tremblay. Wants to do a portrait of me. What do you mean, oh? Yes, but it was the way you said it. I see. Beautiful women are all in a day's work for them. Really? <laughs> well, I could say that I could make him say I love you within half an hour. But I've no intention of... But, Jerry, how can you be so impertinent? Very well, I accept that bet. Just a moment. I think he's here now. Marie, if that's Mr. Tremblay, show him into the music room. And seat him upstage. I mean on the far side of the room so I can make an entrance. Hello, Jerry. He will say he loves me within half an hour. And that's a bet. Mr. Tremblay? Yes. Miss Hartford, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am for, well, for your kindness in permitting me to come. I've looked forward to it. I may not have made it clear over the phone. My dealer is planning an exhibition of my work soon, and I want more than anything to include a portrait of you. How sweet. But it was thoughtless of me to disturb you after a long day at the studio. I'll come back another time. No, no, no. I want you to stay. You do? How long would it take you? For the, the rough sketch, uh, would half an hour be too long? Half an hour? <laughs> That's exactly the time I allowed. I mean, for your painting. Well, I'll just set up the easel and... Later, later. First, we must be friends. Good friends. I want you to tell me all about yourself. Please sit down. Thank you. No, no, you'll be more comfortable over here, by me. Oh, I'm quite all right. This couch is fine. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? I'll come over there. Uh, we, uh, we only have a few minutes. I, I ought to... Don't worry. I have my eye on the time. Nicky, will uh, you forgive... My name is Peter. What? Uh, Peter. I like Nicky better. Nicky, will you forgive me if I confess? I never saw any of your work. Oh, I can understand that. I've lived abroad for the past ten years. France. That's where I first saw you on the screen. And ever since then, my one desire has been to... Yes? Well, you can imagine what it was over there year after year, seeing your image and never you yourself. But, but I couldn't leave. Your work came first, hmm? No, the boat fare. However, I brought one of my watercolors to show you. May I? I'd love to see it. It won first prize in Paris. Here. Oh, how exquisite. How perfectly exquisite. Uh, I, I think you'll like it better right side up. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. I do. It's so marvelously subtle. What is it? Well, it was called Washington Crossing the Delaware. That is, until the roof leaked. Now it's called the Delaware. But, but my career will not have begun until I painted you. Dear Nicky. <laughs> How would you like me to pose? Something different? Something not too utterly obvious? I have it. The piano. And I'll play for you while you work. Do you know this? 
Chopin. Oh, that man understood love. Oh, I don't know. I read somewhere he didn't do so well. It's, it's very funny. It seems that... How can a man listen to Chopin and not think of love? The mood, the sweeping mood that... Must you rattle that easel? Switch off one of the lights. That's a dear. I want a single light shimmering down over my hair. Nicky, what are you thinking? That light. It does something thrilling to you. Tell me. Oh, I can't. I won't be angry. See, I'd better get on with the picture painting. If only I can capture you on canvas as I see you now. Excitingly beautiful. The highlights in your eyes seem to go deep into your soul. There's a halo over your head. Fragrant, intoxicating. Oh, silly boy. We've only just met. You aren't... Uh, you aren't trying to tell me you love me. Oh, certainly not. I'm married. Married? You aren't. It isn't true. I thought it was a dream myself until all those children came. Uh. How many do you have? Well, offhand, I'd say... Offhand? I, I must have prayed too hard for the pitter-patter of little feet. It turned into a cloudburst. There's little Johnny, Ruthie, Junior A and Junior B. And, and I mustn't forget the twins. No, don't forget the twins. I'm sure I saw another one running around here somewhere, but he may be an outsider. I, one of these days I must look into that. But you, you seem disturbed. Is anything wrong? Offhand, a few little things have arisen. Isn't it a romantic night? I can see the moon shining through that window. Moon? I'd have sworn it was raining. I keep hearing the little pitter-patter. Well, by the way, how much time do we have? I only have... Uh, you only have ten minutes to go. I'm always watching the time. It's a habit since I discovered how jealous my wife was. Thought every woman was in love with me. Wanted to shoot them. Shoot them? Such an impulsive creature... I always said to her, dear, if you shoot the other woman, what have you got? Nothing. On the other hand, if you sue for alienation of affection... Oh, but of course, all that was years ago. Before she ran off with the postman. Your wife ran off with the... Oh, I, I got over it. I, I never got any mail anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Dear boy, you're completely free now? Aren't you? She took the children? Uh, yes, yes. Dear boy, Nicky. Uh, Ghislaine. I, I mean, Miss Hartford. You may call me Ghislaine if you wish. May I? Because I always think of you as Ghislaine. And what do you think when you think of me? How much I want to know you. I'm not a bit afraid of you. I thought I would be. Why? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I was afraid that being near you... After thinking of you so long, that, that our very closeness, yes. our... Yes, Oh, don't move. Hold that pose. Oh, Nicky. There are no words to describe you. You're radiant. And that means something to you? Oh, everything. You... you care for me? Oh, you mustn't take me seriously. I'm just keeping you in a romantic mood for the painting. It's part of my business. Hello? No, Jerry. No, no, no. I know it's been 20 minutes, but give me time. There have been complications. Good old Jerry. What did you say? Uh, no, nothing, nothing. You said good old Jerry. Oh, did I? Do you know Jerry Smith? Who? Jerry Smith. Uh, the, how, how do you spell it? Uh, you do know him, and he put you up to this. Let me see that painting. It isn't finished. Uh, Maybe it is. You'd be surprised. Well, I'm very sensitive about my work. You, you might not understand my style. I belong to the modern school. Give me that. Oh, I knew it. You haven't been painting at all. You've been playing tic-tac-toe. Oh, it's just that you don't understand it. it it's, it's very progressive. Why did you pretend to be an artist? Well, I told you I'd been away so long. I saw you on the screen and everything changed. I thought of you night and day. If only you knew how lonely I was out there year after year in the Australian bush. Australian? You told me France. You've lied about everything. What about your wife? I... I thought she'd make me seem more respectable. And the children? Local color. <laughs> Did you come here on a bet? 
I didn't expect to find myself feeling quite as I do. Did you come here on a bet? Could, if you could see yourself as I do, ravishingly beautiful. Did you come here on a bet? Could I do such a thing? Did you? Uh, yes. <laughs> Jerry bet me five to one I couldn't resist you. That I'd fall in love with you and, and say so. He did, huh? He's, he's won his bet. Elaine, I, I am in love with you. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, oh, say that again. I love you. Oh, 23 and one half minutes. Not bad, not bad at all. But I admit you had me worried there for a while. You mean you had a bet with Jerry, too? He was playing one of us against the other, but I've won. <laughs> I've won. Ghislaine, I meant what I said. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, was there anything about a kiss in that bet? Certainly not. You underestimated yourself. You should have taken extra odds on that. Let go my arm. Let go. Let... There. Well, that'll be Jerry again. Go ahead, tell him you've won. Gloat over it. Answer it. Tell him. Tell him. Hello, Jerry. If you don't mind, I'd rather not hear it. I'm going. No, Jerry. No. He didn't make love to me. You won. Why did you tell him that? Oh, I thought you'd gone. I, I forgot my easel. There it is. Why did you tell Jerry? Don't forget your brushes. No, I, I won't. I... That easel must be very heavy. Of course, if you wish to rest for a moment before you go. I'm not tired. What are you playing? Chopin's prelude. Well, I'll stay for for just a moment. Prelude to what? Oh, how that man understood love. Bravo, Marlene, bravo. And find John Lake. Now that lovely Boswell girl again. And this time she sings a song called Stop, It's Wonderful. And I know you'll like the way Connie sings it. All right, Connie dear, come ahead. Stop, stop on your motor car. Right in front of every star. Don't you know just where you are? Stop. It's wonderful, I'll admit, I think you're swell. Nice to know you, nice you fell. I'm afraid you'll kiss and tell. Stop. It's wonderful, and I don't know just what I'll do. Cause I'm getting sentimental over you. What to do? You better stop that motor, turn the key. Come aside, be home by three. Can't forget what Ma told me. Stop. It's wonderful. I have the right idea, though I'm just 17. When the stars start winking, I know just what they mean. Some folks think the moon above is just the big chandelier. But I get romantic whenever he is near. Oh, drop down on your motor car, right in front of every star. Don't you know just where you are? Stop, it's wonderful. I'll admit I think you're swell. Nice to know you, nice you fell. I'm afraid you'll kiss and tell. Stop. It's wonderful I don't know what I'll do I'm getting sentimental over you Better turn your feet Come if I'd be home by three Mom be waiting there for me Stop It's wonderful You're wonderful Wonderful. 
And now, here's Warren Hall with a question. Thanks, Eddie. Ladies, tell me. When you throw away coffee grounds, do you ever suspect that some of the coffee goodness you should have had in the cup just never arrived? is still in those watery grounds? Yes, I've often thought of that, Mr. Hull. But what on earth can I do about it? Well, madam, if some of your coffee's precious flavor wasn't extracted from the grounds, the chances are you're not using the right grind of coffee for your way of making coffee. In fact, today, with all the different ways of making coffee, the very best coffee, ground one all-purpose way, can't give you the most in flavor and economy. So an all-purpose grind won't do. Tell me why. Well, here's just why. When you make coffee correctly by the drip method, the water passes through the coffee just once. Now, that means unless the coffee you use is ground just fine enough, the full coffee flavor won't be extracted completely, no matter how much you use. And that's just why Maxwell House comes in a special drip grind, a grind you can always trust to give you clear, full-bodied, flavorful coffee in any type of drip or glass coffee maker. On the other hand, those of you ladies who make coffee in percolator or coffee pot Know the water comes in contact with the coffee not once, but many times. Now, that's why you need the regular grind Maxwell House to stand up in the longer brewing and give you the rich, satisfying coffee you should expect every day. So, ladies, try Maxwell House tomorrow, won't you? Drip or regular, just choose the grind that's right for your way of making coffee. Discover in Maxwell House the extra flavor and economy of perfect coffee, perfectly ground. We continue our Maxwell House Good News show with a number you didn't expect to hear. It's called Roll On, Mississippi, Roll On. You know, there's something about that tune that always takes me right down on the levee, where the folks think of Old Man River as a sort of good spirit. Why, down there, the father of the waters is a comforting friend they can talk with and even tell their troubles to. I used to know an old riverboat captain who had a real horror of leaving the Mississippi. One day he said to me, Eddie, to think of leaving old master makes me shiver. Why, I don't know what I'd do without the Mississippi River. And if I ever leave aside some far-off land to roam, the good old Mississippi is sure to bring me home. Lordy, take a look at that shore. Soon I'll be with the folks I adore. Why, there's a spot round the bend. That's for home. It's for journey's end. Come on, old man, river, come on. Roll on, Mississippi, roll on. Roll on, you Mississippi, roll on. Come on, you lazy steam, I move on. Boy, what luck we're with the tide. Cut her loose and let her start a riding on his own. Oh, Lord. And sure, oh, I'll be with the folks I adore. Oh, Hurry, folks. Gentlemen, we're going to assemble our cast. We're going to present a little sketch for you. Not a very good, not very bad, but I don't think you'll mind it. We haven't the title for it, but if you think the sketch deserves one, send in your suggestions and it'll be filed away in our wastebasket along with the sketch. I'll tell you now, though, that it's a football story. And the cast, well, I'll let them speak for themselves. I'm the football coach at State University. Also, the professor of history. It's a kind of a small college, you know, a small state, too. And I'm Marlena, the coach's beautiful daughter, and also the president of the Wattam Dottam Chu sorority. I'm Smith, Marlene's beautiful little sister. Ain't I pretty? 
I am Meredith Wilson, president of the Student Botany Club and a substitute on the football team. I am in love with Marlene. <laughs> well, guess who I am? I'm Maxie Rosenblum, captain of the varsity. And I'm in love with Marlene, too. I'm the hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, our story begins in the living room of the coach's house. I need hardly say it's the eve of the big game with Grafter College. Beautiful Marlene is seated on a beautiful Morris chair. When in rushes beautiful Meredith Wilson. <laughs> Marlene, I have wonderful news for you. You're going to have a haircut. <laughs> it's better than that. Maxie Rosenblum can't play in the game with Grafter tomorrow. Maxie's hurt? No, he's ineligible. Oh, my poor Maxie. He's the biggest drawback on the team. Fullback. <laughs> All right, fullback. I'm going to take his place. And uh, if we win tomorrow, it cinches me for a job in the brush factory next June so we can get married. But I do not love you. I love Maxie. He recites such beautiful poetry. Well, what's the matter with me? Oh, you haven't any romance in you. I have, too. I just don't get as much practice as Rosenblum. You think you could improve with practice? I sure could. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Shh. Are you sure there's nobody around? Positive. Better make sure. Hmm. Nobody in the closet. There's nobody behind the curtains. Nobody in the hall. There's nobody under the couch either. Go ahead and kiss it. Snooks, you little spy. What are you doing under there? I'm looking for my marbles. Well, did you lose them in here? No, I lost them in the yard. Then why are you looking in this room? Because there's more light here. Well, look for them later. Later, I'm talking uh, business with your sister. I know. Snooks, dear, if you leave the room, I'll give you my bar pin. I don't want it. Go on, Snooks, I'll give you a charm bracelet. I don't want it. Well, for heaven's sake, what do you want? I want to watch. <laughs> Now you beat it or I'll... I'll beat it. Goodbye. Now we're rid of her. Take me in your arms, Meredith. Oh, gee. Gosh, Marlene, you're soft. <laughs> Stop talking. Okay. What'll I do now? Now you put your face close to mine. Okay. Now you purse your lips like this. Like this? No, no. Like this. As if you were going to whistle. Okay. Now go ahead. <laughs> oh, you're impossible. Don't you know how to kiss? Who's that? I'm afraid it's Maxie. Is that you, Maxie? Who else? Hell to be blithe scholar, buried thou never work. <laughs> Well, where can I hide? If he finds me here, he'll hit me. Get another couch. No, I'll hide in this closet. It ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> How did you get back in there? I ain't telling. Oh, for a drift of vintage that has been cooled along age with these devil's <laughs> Hey, open up, Marlene. Snooks, you tell Maxie I'm not home. All right. Come, Meredith. We go out to the back. Come in, Maxie. Hello, bad news. Where's your sister? I don't know. Look, I need her assistance. Desperately. This very afternoon, your father is going to examine me in history. I'll help you. Shh. I hear your old man coming out. What do I have to do? Here, take this book and get under the couch. When I get stuck in a speech, throw me a word. All right. Good evening, Rosenblum. Hello, coach. I'm not speaking as your coach now. I'm speaking as your history professor. Are you ready for the test? Have you ever found me unprepared, professor? Every day for a year. <laughs> That's what everybody says. Well, shoot the question to me, doc boy. <laughs> All right. Recite the Declaration of Independence. Are you ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> Who said that? Me. I, I got sinus trouble. Here I go. Declaration of Independence. When in the course of uh, human... Uh, Human Event? events. It becomes necessary to uh, becomes turn necessary over. to uh, to becomes necessary to turn over. What? I mean the page. I mean the page becomes necessary. Oh, uh, for heaven's sake! 
It comes necessary for one nation to dissolve the political bands which have connected it with another. Hey, Daddy, who's helping him, you or me? Snooks! <laughs> so, Rosenblum, you thought you could deceive me, eh? No harm in trying. Let Mikey play in the game, Daddy. You can't do it, Coach. He's ineligible, isn't he, Marlene? I think he's beautiful. <laughs> Hello, baby. Forever wilt thou love shall be fair. Oh, quiet. Something must be done. you got to put me in, Coach. I'm your only substitute. I don't know what to do. Put me in the game, Coach. For two long years, I've been sitting on that bench. I'd rather sit in the bench. <laughs> I'll play, Daddy. Father, I have an idea. Give Maxie another test. She's turned against me. It's no use, honey. <laughs> ah, it's no use, honey. I'm dead with them tests. Now, wait a minute. I'll give you one more chance. If you can answer 50% of these questions, you can play. It gets tougher and tougher all the time. <laughs> all right, Rum Dum. I'll examine you in chemistry. Here's the first question. Shoot. What color is blue vitriol? Even, even Clifton Faderman couldn't answer that one. Give him a hint, Dad. Quiet. Come on. What's the color of blue vitriol? Uh, pink. That's wrong. Now, here's the other question. How do you make sulfuric acid? I don't know. Right. You got 50% correct, so you can play tomorrow. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Molly. Oh, Eight weeks ago in the concert hall, Meredith Wilson began an important experiment. He believed then, and he believes now more than ever, that American composers can write beautiful music that will last always in the memory of man. Already Peter DeRose's American Waltz, Sigmund Romberg's Humoresque, and Duke Ellicott's Lullaby have received ovations here in the concert hall. Tonight, the fourth is ready for its world premiere, The American Serenade, written especially for this series by Louis Alter. All right, Meredith, Louis Alter's American Serenade.
I can't tell you how much we enjoy that, Meredith. My compliments, in fact, the compliments of all of us here at the concert hall to Louis Alter for his American serenade. Next week, Meredith will introduce the fifth of our new American compositions, A Nocturne by Dana Suisse. <laughs> and now Meredith Wilson has another commission to make for this concert hall series, The American Caprice. Whom have you selected to write it, Meredith? Another one of our outstanding popular composers, Morton Gould. And I hereby commission him to write an American Caprice to be introduced on Good News soon. Good luck, Morton. We'll all be looking forward to it. Indeed we will. And next week, another gala Good News show with one of America's truly great actors, Walter Houston, returning again as our special guest of honor. And, of course, all of our regular gang, Fanny Bryce's Baby Snooks, accompanied by Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Connie Boswell, Meredith Wilson's Music, and, of course, yours truly. This is Edward Arnold saying good night, and we'll be seeing you next Thursday. <laughs> This is Warren Hull reminding you that this year, more than ever, the American Red Cross needs your support. Help the Red Cross help others in this time of need. Enroll in the Red Cross today. And now, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. This is the National Broadcast.